Hello and welcome to the very next episode of Hashtag Pokedrama TTM News, where I will be your host, Matty Brolic. Now, I know last episode I made a little bit of a promise saying that if we managed to get over 75 likes, I would do this next episode shirtless. Now, props to you all for actually giving it over like 110 likes. I really was not expecting that, but because I've just started this series and I don't really know everyone too well on here, I just figured that it wasn't really appropriate for me to take my shirt off just yet. I figured that just leaving on the t-shirt would be fine. You know, maybe I'll just take my shirt off another time. better so without further ado let's get into the news shall we i'll see you there Okay, welcome back all you drama kings and queens. Allow me to reintroduce myself. My name is Matty Brolic and I am back for the next episode of Hashtag Pokedrama TTM News where I, your host, will be giving you all of the juiciest drama around the community. Now, to start off our video, we have a recent news story that has surfaced. It actually happened uh, a little bit after the March Madness Tournament, which happened, I believe it was last weekend. And it all started with a certain video made by a certain beloved analyst and draft format player in the community known as It's Turbo. Now, It's Turbo made a video about the top seven washed up players in the draft format community. Sound familiar? We also talked about a washed up player last week, talking about Iron Flash Gaming, otherwise known as Zazo, or how he pronounces it, Zazo. In the comments, there were mixed reviews on whether he was washed up or not. So some people think he's not washed up. Some people think he is. I don't know. I, like I said last time, don't want to believe he's washed up just yet. So if you still have anything to comment on that, let me know down below once again. But to move on with this story, It's Turbo made a video about the top seven most washed up players in the format. So as you can imagine, um, everyone who's on there is someone that may have lost some steam or they may not be doing as well as they once had in the past in the format. So, um, what happened was he ended up putting the self-proclaimed GOAT of the draft format at number two on this list. And if you guys know the format pretty well, you probably know who I'm talking about. And that is Aki VGC. None other than, like I said, the self-proclaimed GOAT. Now, personally, I am a big fan of Aki and his play in the format. I think he's an excellent builder and player. I do think he's one of the best. Him, Gypsy King, uh, Iron Flash Gaming, and myself consider ourselves to be on Mount Rushmore, which is obviously very subjective and just kind of a joke that we like to make. But um, we consider ourselves to be the Mount Rushmore of the format. And... Um, with Aki being on the top there, it's kind of surprising to see him on the list of Turbo's most washed up players. But Turbo made all these comments about how Aki was just so much better in Gen 6. He hasn't been continuing on his same streak of dominance where he's not winning championships anymore. So, of course, Aki, being another controversial figure in the format and another drama king, had to start with Turbo saying that there's been... Well, actually, he didn't direct this at... Um, sorry if I'm <laughs> stretching a little bit. This is a kind of uncomfortable position for my back. Um, Aki put a post on Twitter, as you'll see on the screen soon, about how there's been no changing of the guards in the format. That him, Gypsy King, Iron Flash Gaming, and myself are still the top dogs. But Turbo did not take too kindly to that one. And he um, starts talking to Aki about how that's not true, and Aki starts bringing up how Turbo, back in his earlier days of the draft format, didn't even understand how Stealth Rocks worked by saying that he thought his Mega Low Punny would die to Stealth Rocks when it had above 6.25%, which is how much Low Punny takes, Mega Low Punny takes from Stealth Rocks. So, after that, Turbo calls Aki washed up and starts flaming him of his constant and flagrant use of the N-word. Now, my personal opinion is that racist 
slurs, even if they're not meant to be racist, just shouldn't be used at all because there's just so many other words out there that we could use and I just don't feel that it's necessary. But Aki defended himself by just saying, listen, I just use this word, I'm not trying to be racist. And I understand that. So they're just going back and forth. Turbo keeps saying Aki's washed up and that he'll get destroyed by guys like Monotui. And then Aki responds by saying, I destroyed Monotui in Summer Showdown, which is actually the truth. So um, they kept going back and forth for a while. And at the end of the day, who do you think was the winner of this beef? And I have the answer to that. The answer is nobody because this type of malicious drama is just not good we don't want this in our pokemon community we want to, we want to be a tight-knit community filled with love you know a little bit of drama here and there a little bit of funny things some memes all that could be good but when it comes to malicious drama we don't want any of that so hopefully these guys have learned their lesson and they won't do this again because if they do then i'll have no choice but to have their mothers on here and trust me Take a look at me right now. Do you really think you're going to want your mother to be hanging around with me? Answer that down in the comments below. <laughs> and with that, we'll segue on to the next news story. So going back to March Madness, which I said took place um, last week, I had mentioned that in, in the last episode of Poke Drama TTM News, I had mentioned that if I were to win the March Madness tournament, because I was the only TTM member that had joined, that we'd have a chance that Crobat for the win, otherwise known as Danza, would actually make a larger than life face reveal, which so many of us are just dying to see. And I said that for anyone who's put up against me, you should probably just forfeit to make it a lot easier for me to just run right through the tournament and get the win. Because even if it's just a one in a million chance to see Danza's face, everybody who knows Danza, Crobat for the win, wants to see his face. So I just asked everyone to cooperate with me, help me out, let me get this championship, and maybe we'll see Danza's face. But what happened? What happened, you ask? I went 0 and 4 in my pools, and I did not even make it to the brackets. And listen, let me say something right here. I am not washed up. I don't care what anybody thinks. I am not washed up. I what happened was, and I'm almost, com I'm very confident that this is the case. I'm pretty sure that the only way this was able to happen is because. Crobat for the win, colluded with the Russian government, and had their ace in the hole hackers hack my battles for the pool games to make sure that there was no chance that I could win any of those games, thus leading to me going 0-4, not even giving me a chance at the bracket rounds, because I'm someone who's historically done well in these tournaments, so for me to go 0-4, there's no way it's that I'm washed up, there's no way, it has to be the Russian government, because... Otherwise, there's just no logical explanation. It can't be that I'm washed up. I didn't make Turbo's list because I'm not washed up. So, what do you guys think? Do you think I really am washed up? Or do you think it was just the Russians colluding against me in cahoots with Crobat for the win to make sure that he doesn't have to show his face? I want to hear your thoughts in the comments below. Because like I said, there's no way that I'm washed up. So, speaking of someone who's washed up, that'll help us perfectly segue into our next topic. As... We are going to talk about another fellow beloved TTM member in none other than Jolt from the Token Minorities, the coach of the Kansas City Giraffe Chiefs in the GBA. Now, when I made the last episode, Jolt was 7-0 at the time. He was undefeated. Now, for Jolt, someone who's washed up, that was pretty surprising. No one really expected him to do that well. You know, 7-0, that's a pretty big deal. He was beating the top dogs, Pokemon, MD, MV and just a whole bunch of others that he was um, getting wins over. And last time I asked you all if you thought that maybe his good friend, another fellow beloved TTM member, Styx, was actually the one playing for Jolt because Styx is someone who's doing really well in the format and Jolt is someone who's kind of washed up. So maybe I thought he needed the help of Styx to actually get all of these wins. But some people suggested that maybe Jolt and Sticks are the same person. Some people suggested that it is Sticks playing, but it really did raise some questions. And it's funny because after I mentioned that, after I proved that we were all on to the scheme that Jolt has going on behind the scenes, um, he lost his next two games. So the following two weeks, he lost to both uh, Aster J and Joey Pokeem MD, and he is now 7-2. and two. And that's kind of suspicious to me because we just said how it's crazy that he's undefeated, maybe it's not him playing, and now all of a sudden, he just happens to drop two games. Now this raises some more questions for me because 
not to disrespect Jolt's opponents, Aster and Pokemon MD, but I don't think Styx would have lost those games. So, could it have been something where Jolt was actually playing this whole time and he actually managed to go undefeated for that long in the season? I don't know, ladies and gentlemen. Personally, I don't believe it. I think Jolt is washed up, and I don't think he could have gone 7-0 on his own. But it is a possibility, and I will not rule it out entirely. Uh, another possibility is that Styx had been the one playing all this time, and because they realized that we were onto them, and they knew maybe we would IP check them, he had to let Jolt play these next two games, and you know what we'd all expect from Jolt is that he'd lose them both. So now Jolt is 7-2. and two. Maybe that's what happened. Styx was playing all along, and Jolt had to play now, knowing that we were onto him, and that we were figuring out his scheme all along. The other possibility is that Jolt and Styx just happen to be the same person. And maybe when the Styx side plays, he happens to win. And sometimes the Jolt side gets to take over and he wins. And some people have even suggested that Crobat for the win is also part of the same entity as Jolt and Styx. So let me know what you think below. Which possibility do you think it is? Do you think that Jolt just happened to go on a crazy seven game win streak when he's washed up? Do you think that Styx was playing most of these games and Jolt just had to step in because he knew we were on to him? Or could Jolt, Styx, and even maybe Crobat for the win be just the same person? I would like to know in the comments below. So please let me know. And now for our final news story of the day, it is going to be about none other than Mr. Murkrow. Now, Mr. Murkrow has been known to create some of the spiciest memes in the format, not because he's funny, it's because he says things himself, maybe some controversial, maybe some, or not maybe, definitely some rude things that would kind of uh, make for some nice and spicy memes. And he is struck yet again, because if you guys did not watch his week two NPL match, then I suggest you go do that now um, so you don't get spoiled. But if not, he played against Moxie and Fernape, and it was a good game, close game back and forth, but there was a little bit of hacks involved, and the hacks totally favored Mr. Murkrow, and had he not gotten that hacks, he would not have been able to edge out uh, Moxie and Fernape, and at the end of the game, despite stealing the win with hacks, Mr. Murkrow says in the chat, I'm 2-0, and, and <laughs> he's totally flaunting the fact that he's 2-0. and Now... I want to give Merck the benefit of the doubt and say that maybe he was just really excited because I don't think he's ever been 2-0 in the MPL before. Um, he's historically been a lot more successful in other leagues than the National Pokeball League. So maybe he was just really excited. Who knows? But another possibility is that he was just you know feeling himself and he was flaunting that 2-0 record in everyone's face despite haxing his opponent, Moxie and Fernape. So if he did that, that's not cool, and you know I don't know where we're gonna go from here. Every time he wins, is he gonna state his record, or is he gonna be done with that after the meme that has ensued after his first time stating I'm two and zero, or is it gonna continue for every time he wins? Because you know the second he loses, he's not gonna say, "Oh, I'm two and one, I'm three and one." Not a chance. So uh, let me know in the comments below. Do you think Merck was just really, really overly excited that he was two and zero in the National Pokeball League, or do you think that he simply was so excited about his win that he just had to flaunt it in everybody's face despite stealing it from his opponent, Moxie and Fernape. I would like to know in the comments below. And um, yeah, with that being said, we've just about wrapped up this episode of Shirtless Hashtag Pokedrama TTM News. So let me know what you all thought in the comments below. Last time we had quite a bit of engagement. I really enjoyed getting to talk to everyone in the comments. And like I said, I was really surprised about the amount of likes that we got. It was like over 110, and um, I was surprised. So I hope that this video lived up to expectations. I hope that um, you guys will continue to watch the hashtag Pokedrama TTM news as we will be getting only the juiciest news stories for you guys going forward. I know this week was a little bit slow with some of the news stories, but I do have a good one for the next video with a potentially very special guest. So you may want to stick around and check out that next one. And yeah, that, like I said, about wraps up the news video. So please feel free to let me know what you all thought in the comments below. Any type of engagement is good engagement for me. And yeah, most importantly, I hope you're all having yourselves a fantastic day. And I will see you all in the next one. Stay classy, Pokemon fans.